Scripture today comes from uh, the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 20, and it reads as such. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made, so they are without excuse. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks to you, God. God. <clears throat> now it's my turn. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, open our hearts to feel your Holy Spirit in our lives. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. You know, I started thinking about doing this. Somebody asked me uh, to if I would preach on the Apostles' Creed so that they would have a better understanding of, of what we're saying. And um, I thought, well, yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be a great idea. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to take some time and study this. And it's been a long time since I've really studied uh, what every little nuance of it means. So I'm going to take a little time and go to Camp Wesley Pines. They'll give us a couple of days there, and, and uh, it's quiet, uh, no cell phone, no TV. And um, I looked and uh, started studying for the creed, and I thought, well, this is going to be real easy, but then the Lord said, no, it's not. Um, you're going to take this line by line instead of portion by portion. You're going to take it line by line, and you're going to do this. And so I thought, well, you know, it's probably better to do it the way the Lord wants me to than the way I want to do it. So that's why it, it came out this way, and we'll be talking about it for the next few weeks. When we say a creed, the word comes is credo, and it comes from the Greek, and it means, very simply, I believe. So the first thing that we have to understand about this scripture, about this uh, piece of uh, work, that, that this creed that we use, is that we believe it. It's a statement of faith. Now let's do a, let's do a quick survey. How many of you believe that drinking eight glasses of water a day is good for you? How many of you believe that? Okay, you can put your hands down. Y'all believe? Okay, let's see. All right. How many of you do it? Just a few. Just a few. So does that mean that the rest of us don't really believe that? Well, no, we believe it, but we don't act on it. And when we really, when we say these words, we need to act on them. We need to understand what they mean, and we need to make it a part of every fiber of our being. We need to understand when we say, I believe, that means something. It stands for something. I believe. Then we go on a little farther. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I believe in God. In other words, we believe in something bigger than ourselves. There is something that is bigger than who we are and what we are. Next week we're going to talk about creation, so I'm not going to go real deeply into that. But we, we believe in a God, a supreme being who loves us and cares for us and wants us to be His people, His children. We believe in a God, omniscient, omnipresent. We believe in a God who is there for us. A God who saved us from our sins, who made it possible for us to be in a relationship with Him. Through the power of His Son, whom He sent to love us and care for us and show us the way, the way to love each other and be kind to one another and forgive one another. We believe in a God who exists outside of time, who exists outside of time, who is present at the beginning and at the end. God is other. 
we tend to make God in our image. That's a big word called anthropomorphize God to make him in our image. Looks like an old man. It's like the kid in Sunday school class who was drawing teacher, giving him a little time to, to draw a picture. And she said, little Johnny, what, what are you drawing a picture of? He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. She said, but honey, nobody knows what God looks like. He said, they'll know when I get through. <laughs> we, we don't know what God looks like. God is holy. And in, in the presence of God, the holiness of God in, in comes into our life. He, he made us holy because He is holy. But because of sin, because sin came into the world, we became flawed. We became sinful. And, and God still loves us. That's the, that's the great part about all this. God still loves us and cares about us and wants us to be His children. Can you understand the magnificence of that? It's just hard to believe that we believe in a Creator, a God, a God who loves us. Doesn't have to. Didn't have to love us. Doesn't have to care for us. We, we believe in a God who is better than us. Who is other than us. We don't believe like the Romans did the gods of the Romans and the Greeks who were very human. And they were lustful, prideful, jealous. They acted like children. The stories of the gods read like Peyton Place. Well, you guys probably won't know what that is. That's, <laughs> that's an old soap opera. And, and it reads like that, and, and we, we just have a hard time under, understanding that. Why have gods like that? You remember um, Conan the Barbarian? Y'all remember Conan? Yeah, big sword, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all pumped up. In, in the world that Conan inhabits, he worships a god named Krom. Krom. God, he is the god of warfare and warriors. The, the thing about Krom that really strikes me is Krom doesn't care if you live or die. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care. If you live, you live. If you die, you die. The best thing to do is die honorably uh, on a field of battle. I, I have a hard time believing in a God like that. We believe in a God of omniscience and omnipotence and power and might. We believe in God the Father. God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. The first who loves us and cares for us like children. <clears throat> the one who gives and forgives and loves and cares and strengthens, teaches, makes us holy, guides us and leads us where we as His children should go. God the Father, who sent the Son. He didn't have to. Could have just left us in our sinful state, following the law of Moses. Could have done that. But instead, He sent His Son as a sacrifice for us. Sent his son not only to live for us, but to die for us. God is like our Father. He loves us like a father's love for his children, a love that never fails, never gives up, never runs out, a love that is deep 
and lasting. A grace that comes when we don't deserve it. A grace that comes when we did not deserve it at all. Grace that comes and fills our hearts with gladness and love. A grace that strengthens us. God our Father. We believe in God the Father. We believe in God the Father who sent His Son, who loves us, cares for us, strengthens us, gives us peace. He says, I give you peace not as the world gives, which can be taken away, but I give you peace that passes all understanding, peace that lasts forever. I give you peace and love and care. We have a God who loves us, strengthens us, we have a God who is almighty. We pray to a God who is almighty, who is creator of everything, master of everything, lover of everything that was created. God created everything in the beginning, and it was good. We have a God almighty, There are no other gods. There is no, nothing like God. There are no other gods. We have a God that is almighty, that loves us. We have a God that is all-powerful, who with a snap of a finger can undo creation. But He chooses to love us. We have a God Almighty who made the universe and the galaxies. I don't know if there are other life forms out there somewhere. I've been reading recently where there are some leading physicists that believe that it is the act of pride to think that we are the only beings made in the image of God out there. I don't know about all that. I know that God is almighty and, and, and loves us and created the universe for us. That everything belongs to God because God is almighty. God is almighty and loves us and cares for us. Still, God is almighty, wants us to be his children. That's, that's a wonderful thing, to know that God loves you and cares for you, that God forgives you, sent his son to die for your sins. A God that a God that loves us, never fails us, forgives us of all that we have done. All He requires is that we love Him. We love Him back. We love Him back. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, we come now in remembrance of the precious gift of Your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you are almighty to deliver us, almighty for us to give you praise. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together.